Hello? Oh, uh, yes. So currently, I think that we will use the take on page only. So what I mean is that there will be two types of page. So one page will be on the uh, just usual page with drop down browser, but you can do it in your home with a uh, time limit. And the other pages are, as I said, in the lecture, it will be kind of taking videos of solution of some exercises. So there are two types of pages will be there. Yes. Oh, no, not that in here. So it is also So every page will be taken on piece. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. Yeah, so actually I talk with my course coordinator and department guys, but you know, there is no no way to yeah, uh, taking up software. So. There's a survey thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard for you and really weird for me because I see I understand. Yeah, I understand. So 
actually, it is my first time to doing a math lecture on this kind of 360 around. <laughs> Yeah, so please forgive me at least first of some weeks, so I will figure it out how to do it effectively, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's the only thing except the exams, so. Yeah. Oh. I was the one asking you for that. Ah, okay, got it. Yeah. So. How do we Yeah, so there was no course key. So it wasn't until she gave me the link mm -hmm. that it automatically put it into the course. Uh, I don't know how it went over here. If this is the first time you've done it, then I can show you. So it looks like this. So maybe we can just. So, yeah, when you log into WebAssign, then you need to log in via Tanya address, and you can use it this login address, not this one, not this right top one, but you need to use the left one, yeah. Then you can see everything without course code. Yeah, Byungsu. Mm -hmm. Pardon? 503 and 803. So this is just combination of two sections. Hello.
So how's your first week going? Yeah. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Yeah, that's first week, especially for pandemic. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so everyone should sit in the red dot because yeah, it is required by the university policy that you need to sit the red dot only in this time. So, yeah. And thank you.
Philly. And before the starting of the course, I need a volunteer to seeing the Zoom chat room because as you see in the last lecture, I usually, you know, because of the lecture, I didn't care about the group chatting. So yes, so if you don't mind, could you just volunteer to just watching the Zoom chat room and if they had any question from the students, then just let me know in class. Is there any volunteer? Okay, what is your name? Grace, okay, thank you, Grace. If you see, uh, if you just log into the Zoom room, and if there is any question, then please let me know. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Okay, welcome to second lecture. So before starting of the uh, lecture, I will just announce that uh, the change of the policy on kids. So as you see in the first lecture, we had some parts on about the in-class kids. So I talked with my course coordinators and the university provost, and they recommended me to do the in take home quizzes only. So all quizzes will be on take home quizzes. So uh, first quiz is uh, about, for example, in the tomorrow, uh, in the, this Thursday, it is just usual quiz. What I mean usual quiz is that you can just log into eCampus and you can just uh, click the quiz at in the eCampus, then you can just solve it by yourself. Uh, and this is the open, open book cages, so you can see your lecture note or whatever you want. But do not see others grade or do not just solve it to read others, right? Just use your lockdown browser and use your own room, right? So it, that's the first type of case. And the second type of cages are just taking a video of the solution. It will be on the page on next week. So I will just give you some recommended exercises and just choose one of the exercises and just solve it by yourself and take a video to how to solve it, right? So just uh, the length of the video will be wait, two minutes. Uh, I think that two minutes are enough, but yeah, it doesn't matter if, if, if you just serve much more. Or, so, but I will, I will announce it the <coughs> details in the later, right? So. These are the change it for us. Okay, so uh, yeah, also there are question up from the remote guys that how do you connect the lockdown browser before the quiz? So yeah, so there are some solution which is called Respondus, and also eCampus also uh, gives or oh, and WebAssign also gives us some lockdown browser setting. So I'm not sure which one is better for your environment. So I will test it. Yeah. Uh, today and let you know which one is better and let you know how to do it. Okay. Question. Open Thursday and you can just solve it in from Thursday, maybe Thursday after the class to the 12 p.m. Right? So it, it, it won't take more than 10 minutes, right? Do you have any other question on quiz or Anything else? Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, first due date of the website homework is tomorrow, but if you purchase your website a little bit later, or if you have any problem on login website, then let me know, I can uh, extend your due date, right? So, okay. Oh, okay, so thank you. Uh, are we allowed to use notes on the kit? Yes, you can use notes on the kit. And the question from the in class is that about the website homework due date. 
So, uh, so due date of the WebAssign, first home of WebAssign is tomorrow. But if you have any trouble on logging WebAssign, and if you take some so many time, then just let me know. I extend your due date on homework, right? So that's my, that's the question. Okay. And is there any other questions? Could you, could you speak more? Ah, class key. So the question from in class is that, do we need a class key for WebAssign? And answer is no. So I will send the link for WebAssign login for everyone after this class. And you don't need this class uh, key if you just log in with special way, right? So do not worry about this. Okay. And do you have any other question? Oh uh, yeah, Morgan Frederick says that how do we access a web assignment? So you can access your web assignment. Okay, I see you in this computer briefly. So just go to Chrome and I share this Chrome. Or we want what Safari or whatever you want browser and go and just Google web assign space time use, right? Then there are something called web assign at time use, Texas A&M at Paris Station login, right? Just click it. And there are two login buttons. So first one is the top one and the other one is bottom one, but do not use the top one, just use the bottom login box. Then they show you the user uh, ad ID login then you can use your net ID to log in this and using your view. And then what you can see is the, this web assign classes, right? And you can see that it's just chapter one homework, right? So it means that you don't need any class key or code key if you just log in using net, net ID, right? No problem. Mm -hmm. Again, and do you have any other question? Okay, thank you. Then let's. Uh, okay, uh, can we share screen again? Okay, then let's briefly review what we did in the last time. So last time we learned about the graph, right? So graph is nothing but uh, some kind of mathematical object consisting of the vertices, which is points, and lines, which is called edges. So you can actually depict some real world kind of, you know, kind of map or kind of road as a edges and, uh, and cities as a vertices. So you can depict the real world using graph, right? So one thing you, we learned about the graph is the path so path is just some kind of walk away in the graph. So definitely you can walk away from this F to A using this F, E, B, A, but you cannot go to directly F to A, right? Because there are no edges between F and A, right? So F, A is not a path, but F, E, B, A is a path, right? So that's the concept of path. And there are some kind of special paths that a path that uses every edge exactly once is called Euler path. And the special uh, kind of path that just uh, a path that ends at the same vertex it starts from is called a circuit, right? Because it just go back to the starting point. So it's called circuit. And a circuit that uses every edge exactly is Euler circuit, right? So these are the um, examples we did trade in the last class. And if you just uh, saw the lecture note, then I will add for these three things, which is just come some exercises for you. But yeah, so if you have any question on this, please let me know. And the, we, we just did trade about the last time is uh, the degree or balance of the vertex. 
So for example, if you have a, such a graph, and if you think about the vertex, then this vertex has degree two because it is connected to these two edges, right? So this vertex also has degree two because it is connected to these edges. And this edge has degree three because it connected with this one, this one, this one. And this one has also degree three. Actually, that's what I mistake, had a mistake in the last structure that even if it is just loop, but it is, loop is counted as two edges, right? Because it has the uh, starting and ending point are the same, so it is counted as two. So it still has degree three, right? So that's the concept of degree. And a simple graph is just some graph without loop, right? So this one is not a simple, but this one is simple, right? So this triangle is simple, but this triangle with loop is not a simple, right? So these are all we did in the last time. So do you have any question before going further? Is everything good? Okay. Okay, great. Then let's do it next one. So let's deal with some examples. So find the balance of each vertex in each graph and show that D, which is just sum of all degrees or sum of all balances of the graph is equal to two times E, where E is just number of edges in the graph, right? So first of all, well, what is the vertex of this leftmost point? Uh, what is the uh, degree of this leftmost point? two, right? Because it has two edges. And what is degree of this the upper point? Three, right? Thank you. And this point is also three. And this point is two, right? So D is just two plus three plus three plus two and which is two plus three is five. So three plus is two is five. So it is just 10, right? And how many edges are here? So it has one, two, three, four, five. So edges are just five. So you can see that two times E is two times five, which is 10. So they are the same, right? So you can check that D is equal to 2E, right? Do you have any question on this counting? Good. Great. Right? Okay, then next example. What is the degree of this the bottom left point? Two, right? And this one is also two. And this one is also two. And for this one, there are four edges, right? Not four, but since roof is counted as two, so it has degree four, right? And you can also count, uh, see that your degree of the graph is just two plus, two plus, two plus, four, which is four plus six, which is 10, right? Then again, you can count your number of edges, one, two, three, four, and five, right? So your edge is to five, so two times, your number of edges is just 10, and which is the same, right? So, do you have a question? Okay. So, is everybody good? Okay, then 
thank you. So yeah, so it's not that difficult. The next one is uh, the something called connected. So a graph is connected if for every pair of vertices there, if there is a path that connects them. So if a graph is not connected, then its parts are called component, right? Components. So I will show some examples of the connectivity of the graph. So here, actually, these are the, yeah, there should be some boxes here, but I forgot to draw the box. So the first graph, which is just these points and edges are connected because, you know, there are for any two vertices, you can find the path from that vertice to this vertice or from this vertice or this vertice, right? So first one is connected. However, see the second one. So in second one, yeah, this part is connected or this should be here. But you cannot find the path from the point A to the point B, right? Because it is not connected via any edges or any there are no, no passes, right? So this graph is not connected. And so we say that each of this part are called component of the graph. Right? Does it make sense? Okay, then let's deal with the next one. So it's a little bit tricky. So is it connected graph or not connected graph? The third one. Not connected? Why? Great, yes. So what is your name? Aaron, Alex has said that Actually, it is not connected because, for example, this triangle has no uh, passes to the, this, uh, this rectangle, right? So, for example, if you're just starting with this red point A and you want to go to red point B, then you need to, there are no passes to go there because this is not allowed in this graph, right? Because this point is not a vertex, right? So you cannot just uh, curve, uh, turn left at this point, right? So since this is not a point, but, uh, since it is not a vertex, you cannot turn to left, right? So there are no passes. There is no path from A to B, right? So that's why this graph is not connected. And if you see the first problem of the web sign, maybe if you already seen it, then there are some examples which is very similar to this example, so please remember it, right? Do you have any question? Could you repeat? Oh. Mm -hmm. So, if, if it's actually trying, uh, so what is her his question? What is your name? Uh, what Avio questioned me is that is the triangle and rectangular are the different components, or it is just crossed robot different one, right? So 
So it depends on how they connect. So for example, if they are connected, then it should be they share some vertex, for example, like this, right? So in this case, there are some rectangular and some triangle, but they are connected, right? Because of this point. Or maybe they have some another edges connecting them like this, right? So they are also connected in this sense. But in this case, they edges are cross it, but the cross it point is not a vertex of the graph, right? So in that case, they are not connected. So this case is not connected or, yeah, it, so it has two components here. So in this case, it has two components. But in this case, they are connected, so there is only one component. Thank you for question. Does it answer your question? Great. Do you have any other question? Great. Okay, so let's talk about the theorem. So that's actually what Ola found out in 10, 200 years ago. So there are basically three cases, whether we can find the order circuit or order pass or no order pass or no order circuit, right? So first case is when the graph has no vertices of all degree. So what I mean, all degree is like this. So for example, if you're thinking about the graph with an edge, then the degree of degree of this vertex A and C is one, right? And degree of this vertex B is two, right? Then all the degree points or all the degree vertices are just A and C. And even degree vertices are just B, right? So the all degree, no vertices of all degree is just like A and C, right? So the vertices which whose degree is three, one, three, five, seven, or with some odd numbers, right? So that's the meaning of the vertices of all degree. So what Euler says that if the graph has no vertices of all degree, then it has at least one of or a circuit and if it, if a graph has all a circuit then it has no vertices of all degree right so that's the first conclusion about the all a circuit so to find the all a circuit in the last time we just try to you know trial and error right so we just try to make uh, some passage it containing everything and go back to the original point. But without just testing, if you just count the number of degrees on the vertices, then at least you know that whether they have all the circuit or not, right? So that's what all the found, found. So, and it is very important in your world application because if you know the shape of graph and if you know just count the degrees, then you can, assure that there are some optimal way of uh, traveling around for all possible edges, right? So that's why we run this kind of result. Okay. So that's the first result. And the second result is that if a graph has exactly two vertices of a degree, then there is at least one or a path, but no order circuit. And in any order pass in a, such a graph, must start at the vertex with an old degree and end at the other vertex of old degree. So for example, this is the case when you have only two vertices has old degrees and all other vertices are has even degree, right? So, and you can see that 
the obvious or the path is just nothing but from A to C, right? A, B, C. And you can see that it starts with A and ends with C, right? And it contains all the edges, right? So these are the second cases. But you cannot find the order circuit in this case because, you know, when you just start with A and go to C, then you cannot go back to A without using the edges you already used, right? So that's why we don't have any order circuit. Do you have any question for these two? Good. And the next result is that if the graph has more than two vertices of all degrees, or it has one vertex of all degree, then it does not have an Euler path. So therefore it does not have an Euler circuit, right? So that's the Euler's foundation. So let's check with this kind of result. So the example below is about determining whether the following graph, I forgot to write down graph. Okay, graph have an Euler circuit, an Euler path, but a non Euler circuit, or neither of one, right? So show that Euler path or Euler circuit if it exists. So first of all, you can try is just use the CRM from the Euler, right? So what you need to do first is find the vertices with all the degree, right? And to find the vertices of all the degree, you need to figure out the degree of each vertex. So for example, for the first graph, A has degree two, and E has degree two, and B has degree four, C and D has degree two, right? So all degrees are even number, right? So in that case, from the Euler theorem, we know that there is Euler circuit. And, and also you can, you maybe find that Euler pass without Euler circuit, but let's try to find it, okay, right? But actually we don't find such a circuit, but let's try it. So for example, you can just start with A, then you can go to E, then you can go to B next. So start with A, go to E, and go to B next, and go to C next, and go to D next, and go to B again, and lastly, go back to A, right? So that's one of the order circuits, and you can find more Euler circuits, right? Mm -hmm. And Euler passes, however, but Euler pass but not Euler circuit does not exist in this case. Because so for example, you can try to find the, some order of passes. So order of pass means that you need to use all the edges, right? But the starting point and the ending point should be different because we just want to find some order of pass, which is not order circuit, right? But in that case, for example, if you're just thinking that starting point is as A and ending point as B, then, you know, there are no ways to cover one of the edges, right? So because for each vertex, it has two edges are connected, right? So if you just use this edge as a start, then you can go back around this here, but try to cover this edge, you need to go back to A, right? Also, if you just use this edge, AE here, then whatever you do, but you need to go back to a to cover this edge, right? And after one of the edges, then you need to go back to the other, uh, to cover other edges. It means that you need to go back to A at the last because if you use two edges at this point, then you don't have any other edges, right? So like this, because if you just starting point is B, then if you just cover this uh, upper left edges, 
then you need to go back to uh, B with upper bottom edges. Then these two edges are covered. And if you just use the upper right edges, then you also go back to bottom right edges, right? So these two edges are so matches. So it means that you need to go back to your starting point. Yeah, no matter what you have, right? So that's why we had on not on all the paths. Does it make sense? Or is it a little bit difficult? This is good. So yeah, you don't need to know about why this one has more not, not have an order pass, but you just if you just find the order circuit when order pass, then you are done, right? So yeah, that's for the something else. And okay, let's try to next one. Okay. So what is the degree of F? Degree of F? Two, right? Thank you. And what is degree of J? Three. And degree of G is three and H is two. So it has two odd vertices, right? So it is the case two. So according to order theorem, it does not have order circuit, right? But according to order theorem, it has an order path, which is starting to one of the odd vertices and ended at the one of the odd vertices, right? So for example, Maybe I can travel from starting with J and go H. So starting with J, go to H and go to G and go to maybe F and go back to J. Then lastly, go to G, right? Then I use averages and also starting J and end it at G, right? So that's one of the or the paths, and there are some more or the passes are here. So, so Leonardo Vega says that is there a group me for this class? So, do you? I I don't know about that question, but yes, because usually yeah, group me is for students, not myself. So yeah, in the last semester, I also joined in the group me chat. But in that case, it doesn't work because you are afraid to say something on group me. So I just leave it for your community. So yeah, so if you have such a group of courses, then just share your students about the community. Right. Okay. Okay. Do you have any question on these examples? Uh, and Morgan says that so paths can travel through lines but circuit can only overlap on point, right? And so paths and circuits are the same, but the different thing is that actually circuit is a special kind of path, which is whose uh, starting point is the same as whose ending point, right? So both, are, both just travel about the edges and we call all the paths or all the circuits as uh, some paths or some circuits just use every edges at once, right? So these are the name for special ones. Does it make sense, Morgan? Great, thank you. Okay. Do you have any other question? Great. Okay, so next thing Again, start with counting the degrees. So degree of L is three because there are three edges connected here. And degree of M is also three. And degree of P is also three. And degree of M is first five, right? So in this case, all vertices has the old degree, right? So in that case, yeah, according to the order theorem, it doesn't have any order circuit or order path, right? 
and the terror says that can a graph be both over path and circuit? Yes. So what I mean is that, so in some sense it is yes, but in some sense it is no. What I mean is some sense it is no, because over circuit is actually the same as or a path because path circuit is special kind of path, right? But what I mean in here is that or a path but not or a circuit means that I just want to find some path which is not a circuit but still is kind of order thing, right? So in that case, yeah, no. So it means that either you can find the order circuit or or a path which is not an order circuit but you cannot have both at the same time, right? Except some special cases, right? You know, if you're just thinking this vertex as a graph, then every choice is, is uh, actually order path and order circuit because there's no edges to taking, right? But except these some kind of special cases, you can just use, uh, you can find order circuit or order path, which is not an order cir circuit, right? But not the both at the same time. Does it make sense? Right, thank you. Do you have any other question? Good. Okay. So again, we can deal with some a little bit difficult ones. So let's see. So first graph, again, what is the degree of A? Oh, thank you. And what is the degree of B? Four, right? Thank you. And degree of C? Two, thank you. And degree of D? Four, right? And degree of E and F are also two, right? So in this case, again, there are no odd vertices. Well, there are no vertices with all degrees, right? So in that case, according to the order theorem, yes, you can find an order path, an order circuit. Then to find this, just start with any points. So let's choose, for example, I just choose try F, then just go to the B and go to A and go to D and go to C and go to A and go to B again, go to D again, go to E, go to F, right? So what I try to do is, yeah, usually in case when you have no odd vertices, then if you just try to follow some paths, then you can already find some order circuit. So in this case, I just from start with D, uh, sorry, no, start with F, and goes to B and goes to D. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Goes to D and goes to A, goes to C. Ah, oh, goes. How can I get it? F, D, D, A, D, A, C, D. Sorry, okay, let's try again. <laughs> I, will, I don't remember what I did. So, okay, start with F, goes to B, okay, goes to D, okay, then goes to A, then goes to C. Ah, okay, in this case, we don't need to, uh, we need to avoid this path because in that case, I cannot make a uh, order path. So, okay, C, D. Now I want to go to B again and goes to A again, goes to C again and goes to D again. And lastly, goes to E again, then F. Yes, then maybe there is one more, some more passes so you can find it. Do you have any question on this? Good. 
And again, from the explanation, yeah, it has no order path, which is not an order circuit. So every order path should be order circuit in this case, right? That's what I mean. Every order path should be order circuit. And the last three example is a little bit difficult, but okay, let's deal with to counting degree first. So degree of A is two, right? And this, these are the typo, and this should be B, and this should be C, otherwise it doesn't have any make sense. So, okay. So, oh yeah, rainy, says that if it is a circuit, it has to be a path as well. Yes, because circuit is a special case of the path. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. And D has degree two, C has degree two, D has degree two, E has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has degree six and F has degree two, K has degree two, I has degree two, H has one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So H has degree six, G has degree two, J has degree two, L has degree two, M has degree two, right? So definitely it has over a circuit, but no over press, which is not over a circuit, right? So, also, I will just repeat exercise because of time, and I will writing down um, tomorrow one of the, my answers. But you can find. I just want you to try to find some, yes, yeah, some oil circuits. Okay. Do you have any question? Is it good? So as I said in the first lecture, all of these matters are just nothing but counting, right? So if you just count something, and if you remember some theorem, then you can figure out the shape or some properties of your graph or some mathematical objects, right? Good, you good? Then revisit the Kenny's Brook problem. So as said in earlier, we can thinking, uh, thinking it as a graph so, and you can think these bridges are on edges. So you can just think, you know, draw a graph, which is actually looks like this. So if you just writing it more clearly, then graph looks like this. And the problem is, can we just cross all the bridges exactly at once, right? It means that can we find an order circuit or all of test on this um, city, right? So that's our question. And to figure out that question, first of all, we need to figure out the degree of each vertex. So say this one is A, oh, sorry, it's A, B, C, D. Ah, okay. My hand is on that. Okay. Then degree of A is three. Degree of B is also three. And degree of C is five. And degree of D is three, right? So in this case, every vertice is are odd degree and there are four odd degree vertices. So there are no way to visit all bridges at once, right? So you need to have at least one edges are uh, uh, repeated for uh, crossing the river, right? Okay. So, so 
the the answer about the can you cross each bridge exactly once and return to your starting spot? No, because there are more than two vertices with all the degrees. Yeah, right? And the answer for next question is the same because first one is just about the order circuit and second one is about the order path. Do you have any question on this example? Okay, great. So let's, so we can solve the question we asked in the first time. So, okay, so next one is about the beyond the over circuit, right? So as you can see, in only graphs with zero vertices with O degree or two vertices with O degree has the order path or order circuit, right? But in the real world example, as you know, there are a lot of graphs whose order vertices are more than two, right? But in that case, as a, you know, if you just go to some companies or if you just go to a manager, then you need to determine which passage are the most efficient passes for your uh, salesman or your, uh, your supply chain or something like that. So to determine this, we, uh, we, we need to figure out, even if it doesn't have an ORF circuit, but it has kind of similar path, which is saves our money the most, right? So to find this, first of all, the people thinking about the Chinese postman program, so it is actually another name of the traveling sales program, right? Traveling salesman program because postman also just uh, goes to everywhere to de deliver their mails. So the Chinese postman program works to answer how we can cover all edges with a minimum length circuit, right? So with a minimum length circuit, the length of a pass is just nothing but how many edges are used for each circuit. So for example, so length of the length of a pass or a circuit is just number of edges used in the pass or circuit. So for example, So, for example, here is, yeah, A, B, C, and your pass is just from A goes to B, goes to C, and goes to D again. So your pass is A, B, C, B. Then length of this pass is What is the length of this pass? Three in this case, because vertices are four, but you know, there are only three edges, A, B, and one B, C, and B, C again are used, right? So length of this pass is just three, right? Does it make sense? So that's the concept of length. So all possible edges, which cover all the edges of the graph, we wanna find the minimum length circuit, right? So for example, 
you can just go back to A, B, C, and once more. So A to B to C to B to A to B to C to B to, you know, <laughs> go again and again. Then it increases your uh, your length of the path, right? But we just want to find the minimum length path or minimum length circuit, which covers all the edges, right? So that's called Chinese plus twin program. Does it make sense? Okay. So to find this, one of the way we can do is the Eulerize the graph. So what I mean Eulerize is just adding some edges so that make degree changes to odd degrees or even degrees, right? So for example, thinking about the, this case, this A, B, C, D with uh, edge in B and C. So in that case, degree of A is two, and degree of C is three, degree of D is three, degree of D is two, right? So according to our Euler theorem, it has only Euler path, not the Euler circuit, right? But we want to find the circuit with minimum length, right? So to make such a circuit, just add some edges, for example, by adding these red edges from A to B and A to C, then it changes your degree of A as four and degree of B as four and degree of C as four and degree of D as two, right? So in that case, now you don't have odd degree vertices anymore, right? So every vertice has even degree. So there is a Euler path, right? Does it make sense? Okay. But as you can see, there are not one way to do Eulerize a graph. There are some more ways to do Eulerize graph. So for example, see the next graph. In the same case, you just add the edges from B to C again, right? Which is just showed in blue line. Then you can see that degree of A is two, degree of C is four, degree of four is, uh, D, D is four, and degree of D is two, right? Again, in this graph, there are no odd vertices, right? So you can find the order circuit, which is uh, for this graph again, right? So let's try to compare those order circuits. So for example, in this case, okay, maybe you can start with A, so it goes to C and go to D and go to B and go to A again and go to B, C, A, right? So A, C, D, B, a, B, C, A. That's one of the order circuit, right? Wait, example of order circuit. And for this graph, example of order circuit is from A goes to C, goes to D, goes to B, and again goes to C, then go back to B and go back to A, right? So it is A, C, D, B, C, B, A, right? But this red line or blue line are actually we intentionally added, right? So if the real world is depicted by the left graph, then these red lines or blue lines cannot exist in the real world, right? So when you find the minimum length, then you can thinking that actually this one can be treated as this kind of path. So just from goes, oh, okay, A, A, C, so this, Order circuit can be treated as A to C to D to B to A, but go back to B again with same same edges. So we repeated edges. 
because this red edge is actually not exist in the real world. So we just use this edge, uh, the exist edge from A to B, right? So from A, C, B, B, go back to A, but go back to B again, and then go back to C, go to A, right? So in this case, we repeated two edges, A, B, and C, A, right? In this path. And in the second one, okay, by the same way, from A goes to C, goes to D, goes to B, and go to C. But again, it used this go, uh, edge from C to B again, and go to A, right? So it repeated this the uh, middle edges in the graph, right? So they are the same circuit in the graph using all of the edges in the original graph, right? But which one is minimal? First one or second one? Second one, right? Because second one already repeated one time for CB, but first one repeated two times, which is AC and AB, right? So in the above two organizations, the second one gives the order circuit with shorter ranks, which means that which means that gives a circuit of original graph with minimum ranks. Because, you know, we already repeated one time, right? But if there is some circuit which does not repeat any of the edges, it means all your circuit, right? But we already know that from the CRM, this graph has originally has no all your circuit, right? So that's why we think that the second one is the minimum rank circuit uh, covering all the edges at once, right? Except CD, right? Does it make sense? I think it is a little bit tricky. Is it okay for you? Do you have any question on this? Wow, you're genius, great. Yeah, really, uh, because yeah, this is a very tricky point. So to figure out the minimum uh, length edges, minimum length circuits, you need to figure out the many possibilities you can have for a circuit. So if you understand this example, then you're perfect, right? Okay. Good. Okay. Do you have any other question? Okay, great. Then let's deal with the example 3.3. .3. So organize the graph. So to again, to figure out this, First of all, you need to count the degrees of each point. So degree of A is two, degree of B is two, degree of C is three, degree of D is three, degree of E is one, right? Because there are only one edge connected. Degree of F is also one, right? So to get rid of such a odd degree vertices, First of all, you can just get rid, add one edge from D to F. Then it changes degree of F as two and degree of D as four, right? Maybe we can add the edge from C to E, but it is not allowed in this case because a degree of uh, edge from C to E means just nothing but edge from C to D and edge from D to E, right? because we just add those uh, edges to make the minimum length circuit of the original one, right? So in the original one, if you just add edges from C to E, then it is treated as a path from C to E using D, right? So in this case, you can just add C to D and D to E, 
and degree of E changed to two, and degree of D changed to six because there are three edges connected D as added, and degree of C it changed to four. And then now you can find some order circuit on this graph, right? Does it make sense? Because there are no odd vertices. Do you have any question on this example? Great. So yeah, if you have any question, please let me know because it's a little tricky point. So I know that maybe, yeah, you are sure right now, but if maybe you are a little bit tricky on the problems, so, okay. So let's deal with some special cases. So this graph is, another name of the graph is called network, and network is rectangular. If it is just usual rectangular blocks, that from a larger rectangle, right? So the below this rectangular with blocks are called just rectangular graphs, right? Because it looks like rectangular, right? So I think that is tautology, but anyway. So rectangular network can be authorized by using on workaround. So, okay, so I need to name this one. Yeah, actually I didn't remember what the exact name of this. Oh, edge worker, oh, sorry. Using edge worker to work around the outer boundary of the larger rectangles and that in an edge to each odd variant vertex that connects to the next path vertex so that path can be used more than once. So just, I wanna try to figure out what it means. So when you just watch this kind of old uh, rectangular network, then you can figure that every point inside of the rectangular has even, even degrees, right? So for example, to this point, say this point A has degree four, right? And this point inside the one, this, this A prime also has degree four, right? So it happens for any rectangular graphs, right? So it means that you can, oh, that every, you, you don't need to care about these inside points, right? So all you need to care is the boundary point. But again, you can see that actually boundary points in the outer boundary in the edge has degree three, right? So point in here, degree three, point in here, degree three, and point in here, degree three, right? Likewise, in this case, point in here has degree three, right? but the point uh, vertex in the corner has degree two. So here it has degree two. So all we need to do is just some adding some edges between those points to delete the old vertices, right? So for example, so for example, now to deal with this, since this has the degree three, so you can just add one of the points from here to here, then degree of this point changes to four, but degree of this point changes three. So to figure out this, just add degree uh, one edge here. So degree of this corner will be four, and degree of this one also change to four, right? Likewise, you can just add some edges in here to change that degree of this one as four. And you can add edges in here to change that all the vertices has degree four, except those two corners, right? But those also have the even degrees, so you can find the order circuit from the graph, right? So, orderize the graph is nothing but making, adding some edges 
So that chain, the graph has all the circuits, right? Does it make sense? Or do you have any question? Okay. I think could you? Are there yes, you're right. So what her what Grace question is that are there uh, multiple ways to do URI something? Then yes, there are actually infinitely many ways to URI something. So yeah, there are not only one, right? But in in this way, the edge URL method is nothing but just adding edges in the outer boundaries. So that code is just edge record method. Okay. That's one of the special name for some methods because Doja actually came from not mathematics but actual uh, load constructions, right? So, okay. And do you have any other question? Good. Okay. Then do the next example. So in the right one. You can see that actually, again, just adding edges in here. Just move to forward. And edges in here, 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 here. Then you can find the, uh, you can make some overwrite the graph. So these are the ways to do it. So one thing you need to remember that middle points are already even degrees of even degrees. So we only care about boundary points, right? That's the point for, yeah, rectangular case, right? Okay. Do you have any question? Great. Okay. Then now let's deal with more difficult example. So in the previous example, we can think that the number of edge as a length, right? But in the real world, actually, even if you have two edges, but they are different, right? So for example, the length from here to broker building is definitely shorter than length from here to Houston, right? So even if we had a graph uh, uh, depicting the path from Houston to here and here to broker, the length should be different, right? So in that case, we just make some number to edges, for example, uh, some number to edges so that it is just weight of the edge or just if in the real world, if you can just thinking it as a distance between two points, right? So then you can, you wanna find some path or circuit which minimize the cost in the, in the path, right? So one thing we can do it is just a graph about the uh, load. So for example, actually these are the, from this year world example. So yeah, from here, we actually uh, load the graph, right? So from this map, using the Oklahoma City and Austin, the last uh, San Antonio, Houston, Baton Rouge, and uh, what is that, Shreveport, we had a graph. So this graph depicts yeah, the real world example on the map. Also, these uh, are actually miles of the each uh, distance between each cities, right? Then now I want to go to, from Baton Rouge to Austin, right, here. And which way is more efficient with respect to my risk? So I just wanna use, uh, you know, to uh, reduce my cost to uh, travel. I just wanna use the path 
which is most effective for travel, right? Then first of all, from Baton Rouge to Austin, I need to use, uh, I need to go to Houston first, right? There are no choice other than that. Then there are two choices. First one is just going to San Antonio and go to Austin, or the other choices are go to Dallas and go to Austin, right? But you can think that actually from Houston to Dallas, it is 247 miles from between there, but it is much more bigger than Houston to San Antonio, right? And also Dallas to Austin is definitely much more yeah, distance than the distance between Austin and San Antonio, right? So I think that the bottom way from Baton Rouge to Houston and Houston to San Antonio, San Antonio to Austin, is definitely much more efficient than the other way from Baton Rouge to Houston, Houston to Dallas, and Dallas to Austin, right? So in this case, Baton Rouge to Houston, and Houston to San Antonio, and San Antonio to Austin is more efficient than Baton Rouge to Houston, Houston to Dallas, and Dallas to uh, Austin, right? And definitely we don't care about kind of, you know, Baton Rouge to Houston, Houston, Dallas, Dallas to San, uh, Oklahoma City, and go back to Dallas again. So we don't care about such a, you know, a little bit, yeah, stupid way of <laughs> doing. So to finding some yeah, efficient way, right? So these two cases are what we consider and you can think that the first one, uh, going to San Antonio is much more efficient way because it has the shorter ranks, right? Does it make sense? Great. So again, so we can do Several example for oralization of the graph. So I will just compare three kind of oralization of the graph and I just figure out how many costs are there for each oral circuit. So for example, for the first one, we know that this A has degree to degree three and B has degree two, C has degree two, D has degree three, E has degree two, right? So definitely D and A has the old degrees. So we need to override this one by adding edges from A to D, right? But in that case, one of the older circuit you can find is just a to B, B to C, C to D, D to A, and go back to D, E, A, right? So A, B, C, D, go A, go back to D, E, A. But it means that your total ranks is from A to B, four, B to C, five, C to D, six, D to A, which is 30, but again, you go back to A to D, right? So again, you need to uh, uh, travel 30 miles and go to E, which is three, go to four, right? So it is just five, four, six, uh, four plus five plus six is 15, plus 30 plus 30 is 60, D plus four is seven, so it is, 82 miles, right? So this path gives us 82 miles. But you can do this in other ways. So for example, instead of oilerizing using the one edges, you can using two edges to oilerize this, AE and ED, because you know AE has the shorter ranks and ED has also the shorter ranks, right? So in this case, your oil pass will be, maybe one of the oil passes just from 
<coughs> A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A, but A to E, E to D, but go back to E, go back to A, right? So one of the order paths is A, B, C, D, go back to A using this one, but go E, sorry, E, D, E, A, right? And the length is, again, from A to B is just four, B to C is five, and C to D is six, and D to E, A is just 30, right? But here, A to D is four, E to D is three, but again, we use this D to E and E to A, so it is three plus four. So four plus five plus six is 15, and 30 plus four is just 30, 34 plus three plus three plus four is 10. Okay, I just write clearly. 34 plus 10, so it is just 50 plus 34, which is 49, 59 miles, right? So this kind of circuit is definitely better than the first one, right? Because it has shorter mileage, right? Does it make sense? Okay. And the lastly, yeah, last one we can thinking about is Maybe you can override in other ways. For example, you can just add in passes in A, B, C, D, and B, C, and C, D. And in this case, again, maybe your order pass order circuit is A, B, C, D, go back to A, and E, D, and using the new edges, you can go back to A, right? So here is A, B, C, D. A, E, D. Oh, does it end of time? Okay, so I, I just stop from here. Then you can find the ranks, which is 67 miles. So the second one is the best one. So maybe try to figure out why the second one is the minimal oil uh, circuit in your homework, right? So that's the end of the class. Thank you very much for sitting here and see you Thursday. If you have any question, please let me know. Yes. And so all of these are even. I'm pretty sure it's asking an oilerizer. Yeah. And so I could figure just go R to T because you know that's just T T. Oh yes, yeah. so because in this case, overriding using from I to G means that it is the same as I to C again uh, C to G. Yes, yeah, so maybe you can change it. The yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So circuit is the special case of pass. So circuit is also a path, but whose starting point is the same as the ending point. So, but path is for any, any kind of thing. So maybe start point may be the same or not. Maybe the same as ending point, but or not. So path is any, any of the path. Yes. So all the paths and all the circuits are just some paths or circuit which contains every edges in the graph. Points. Yeah, they're not points, yeah. Just edges. Ah, yeah, no problem. So, yeah, so just in case, mm -hmm. we'll see how I can better better mm -hmm. see how that uh, works. And thank you for letting me know. But do you, can you have any document for? That uh, living, so maybe no, because it's, it's cool. because you you said that you may yeah, yeah. may yeah. 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 Uh -huh. 
Oh, okay. But mm-hmm. it's from Kate's They Might Listen to the Pilgrim Pilgrim. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'll be doing the Pilgrim Pilgrim for the rest of the year. Okay, yes. So in that case, can you have some document from them about the, your absence, maybe? I mean, is it possible? I, I can send you an email saying, like, hey, I got to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But chances of them getting a document in time are like. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I understand. But. After you are going back to here, then maybe there are some documents. Maybe, yeah, because maybe to like give you, uh, months, yeah, months, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, ah, yeah, months or two, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe that long. Okay. Yeah, but just mm-hmm. to give you a heads up. Okay, got it. I'll send you an email if that's the case. Okay, got it. But, yeah. All right, so does it include maybe the exam time, so maybe next uh, three weeks after, or? Mm-hmm. Does, it, does your absence contain some exam times in maybe first exam or second exam? So when so when will it happen if if it happens? If it happens, okay. I'll send you an email. I'll send you an email saying, hey, I'm going to go to class at this time. I'm going to answer your calls. Oh. Hold my hand. Okay, got it. Yes, just uh, just send me notification. Just send me an email. And then <laughs> weeks from now, I'll get you the paper from the class. Ah, oh, okay. No problem. Yeah. So I will, I will give you a very good reason in that case. Okay. No problem. Have a good day. I see the news story. So what they were saying at the very beginning of the class of taking video. Yeah. So there are quizzes about the taking video. So I will give you some recommended exercises. And you can just take a video about a solution of one of the exercises. And it is just and regarded as your take on quiz. Does it make sense? Oh, yes, I will give you some announcement on the lockdown browser. But yeah, so in the e campus, I think that you don't need to download it, but some other uh, other things like a web assign, you will be downloaded for very, but I will give you some in, in instruction for that. Yeah. So, Sydney, so when you take our quiz, we should send you video describing how we serve it. Not every quiz, but some of the quiz. So for example, quiz in this week, you just serve the, uh, yeah, you know, using the lockdown version, you can just serve it. But quiz in the next week, I will give you some recommended exercises and you can just pick one of them and just take a video about the solution, how you solve the problem by your own way, right? So, so it will be yeah, different. Okay, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you have any other questions? Okay, if you don't have question, then I will just end the session. And if you still, and I will have office hour in after, you know, 3 p.m. So see you on 3 p.m. if you have question. Okay. Bye.